We now move on to section 4, which is the last section in this reading. This is on relative value models. And the way I am going to structure this is as follows. On this slide, I'll just give you the four basic models. And then for each model, we'll spend a little more time and go over some examples. The first model you need to be aware of is the Fed model. And actually, let me do something very briefly. When we talk about relative value models, effectively, what we are saying is we are going to look at ratios. And then we will compare this ratio with some number and decide whether or not markets are overvalued or undervalued. So effectively, we are using ratio analysis to determine whether markets are overvalued or undervalued. And these are the different ratios. The first one is the Fed model. And here we essentially, actually, this is not exactly a ratio, but it's a comparison. We, with the Fed model, we simply compare the S&P 500 forecast earnings. So this is the forecasted earnings for a given major equity index with the 10-year Treasury yield. I'm not going to get into details here because I will do the, the details on the subsequent slides. Here I just want you to remember the four kinds of models. The next one is the Yardini model. This is a slight enhancement of the Fed model. Here we look at earnings yield. So the earnings for the upcoming year divided by current price level is equal to YB. This is the yield on a A-rated corporate bond minus D, which is a discount factor. And this is an estimate of earnings growth rates. And we are going to use these numbers. The third effectively is a P-E ratio. This is the real price of an index. What do we mean by real price? That means inflation adjusted and divided by earnings. With earnings, you will see this thing called 10 year MA. This is the 10 year moving average. Effectively, what we do here is look at the last 10 years earnings. For every year, we take the real earnings, so remove the impact of inflation, and then take the average for 10 years. Why do you think we do this? So 10-year average. This is because earnings are cyclic, and we say that over 10 years, the effect of the cycle goes away. So let's say that you're, on average, the economic cycle is 10 years. So if you take averages over 10 years, then what will happen? You are basically then getting earnings for all stages of the cycle. So effectively, you are normalizing the earnings. You are removing the business cycle impact. So that is your third number. And then the fourth is Tobin's Q and equity Q. Tobin's Q is simply the market value of your company, which is the market value of debt plus equity divided by the replacement cost of all the assets. And equity Q, equity Q is the market value of equity or market cap divided by the replacement value of net assets. In other words, assets minus liabilities. So on this slide, just big picture, remember the four items. What will we do next? Each one in detail. Let's talk about the Fed model first. The Fed model compares the S&P 500 forward earnings yield and the 10-year Treasury yield and uses this comparison to try and figure out whether equity markets are overvalued or undervalued. And let me just say a few things which will make it easy for you to memorize these formulas. They are very straightforward, and if you know where they come from, then they'll be easy to remember and apply. Do you remember your most basic dividend discount model? So the price is equal to D1 over R minus G. Now take a very simplistic world where the entire earning is paid out as dividend. And in that world, there is no growth. Okay, so let's assume G is zero and D1 is E1. So then what do you have? Then you have P is equal to E1 over R. So then what is R equal to? So R is equal to E1 over 
P. This is the earnings yield. This R, actually in this formula, this R is the discount rate on equity. But the reason I did this is just to get this relationship. You see the relationship between R and earnings yield. What this model says, and there are obviously issues with the model, but you need to know that this is the Fed model and you need to know what it says. This model says that the appropriate earnings yield is given by the 10-year treasury yield. So if the 10-year treasury yield is 4.6% given in say example 10, so the 10-year treasury yield is equal to 4.6%. Then according to the Fed model, this is what your stock market's earning yield should be. That's what the model says. I'm not saying it's a right model, but that's what the model says. Now, does this mean that the actual earnings yield, if you look at the market, how do you figure out the actual earnings yield? You will look at the actual expected upcoming earnings divided by the current price level of the index. So you look at the actual, and when you look at the actual, you get a higher number. So you get 5%. So the actual is 5%. Does this mean that the actual market price today is higher than it should be? Is it overvalued or undervalued? So the point here is that the market is undervalued. How do you know this? You know this because what you are actually getting is 5%, which is more than what it should be. And that is because this is a high number because the P or the price level is smaller than what it should be. So the price is lower than what it should be. That's why the overall earnings yield E over P is ending up being higher than what it should be according to the Fed model.